This is the 1973 model dual barrel ball and ball carburetor. The carburetor and the automatic choke are two of the most frequently misunderstood, neglected, tinkered with, and unnecessarily overhauled parts of the automobile. There's nothing much inside of the carburetor that can wear or go wrong unless someone feeds it a slug of water or dirty fuel. Of course, the carburetor isn't completely trouble free. More often than not, carburetor problems are caused by dirty or sticking external linkages or by external misadjustments. All carburetor linkages should be clean and dry. Never lubricate a link or lever because dirt will stick to the oil and cause real trouble. As you know, each choke unit is pre-calibrated and not adjustable. There have been some important changes in the choke system to more nearly match starting and warm-up mixtures to engine requirements. The intake manifold choke well has been redesigned. It is now open-sided. The choke assembly now includes the well cover, the thermostatic choke coil, and an electric choke heating element. At temperatures above 60 degrees, the heater comes on and warms the choke coil. This shortens the choke on time when temperatures are moderate or when the engine is already warm. The control switch for the choke heater turns the heater on at temperatures above 60 degrees, turns it off at about 110 degrees. You'll find choke and heater testing details in your service manuals. Don't try to clean the heating element or you'll cause a short that'll ground out the ignition. A common mistake is to blame the choke when the real trouble is incorrect vacuum kick operation or possibly a sticking manifold heat control valve. A tight manifold heat control valve usually sticks in the open position. And this causes very poor warm-up performance. Vacuum kick problems are more varied. If the vacuum kick diaphragm doesn't open the choke far enough, the engine will load up and roll. If the vacuum kick opening is too wide, the mixture will be too lean, and the engine will stall repeatedly until it is fully warmed up. Here's something worth remembering. The choke modulating spring built into the vacuum kick diaphragm unit must be fully compressed when checking the vacuum kick opening of the choke valve. The purpose of the modulating spring is to help open the choke as the engine warms up. The balance between the modulating spring and the thermostatic choke coil improves choke action and warm-up performance. Failure to compress the modulating spring when setting the vacuum kick will upset the balance between the thermostatic choke coil and the modulating spring. As a result, the engine will be overchoked and run very badly during warm-up. When adjusting vacuum kick, use a pair of pliers to squeeze the loop in the link to increase the choke valve opening. A twist of a screwdriver blade easily opens the loop to decrease vacuum kick opening of the choke valve. Just remember, a small change in the bend of the loop makes a big change in the amount of vacuum kick opening. Use vacuum to retract the kick diaphragm and compress the modulating spring when checking the valve opening. Mouth vacuum works fine. It's a quick and easy way to apply vacuum. Besides, if you stick your tongue over the end of the tube to hold the vacuum while checking, you can easily detect even a small leak in the diaphragm that you might not catch by using a vacuum pump. Sticking choke valves and fast idle cams are also a common cause of poor warm-up performance. Here's why these troubles are so elusive. Gum-tight deposits on the choke and fast idle camshafts stick when the engine is cold. This keeps the choke from closing and the fast idle cam from operating. A sticking choke shaft is hard to diagnose because the gum softens up as the engine warms up and the choke operates freely. The best cure for this trouble is prevention. Flush out the choke shaft and fast idle cam every six months or any time you have the air cleaner off. Chrysler combustion chamber conditioner is good for cleaning choke shafts and external linkages. Don't use any kind of oil. It'll only collect dirt. As you know, the fast idle cam is designed to open from its own weight as the choke opens. If the cam sticks, the engine will race after it's warmed up. The fast idle cam indexing adjustment is very important. It ensures that the fast idle cam will let the engine slow down as the engine warms up and the choke opens. Incorrect fast idle cam indexing is a common cause of stalling during warm-up. If the fast idle rod adjustment is too long, idle speed will drop off too soon. This aggravates carburetor icing and stalling. If the fast idle rod adjustment is too short, the engine will stay on fast idle after the engine is warmed up and the choke is open. Cam indexing is checked with light closing pressure on the choke and the fast idle screw. 
on the second step of the fast idle cam and against the shoulder of the starting step. To adjust fast idle cam indexing, bend the upper angle of the fast idle cam rod. The accelerator pump and bowl vent linkage were changed when the vapor saver was added a couple of years ago. As you know, the vent valve went under cover. The accelerator pump lever lifts the end of the pump stem. A linkage connects the pump lever to the throttle lever. The pump rod should be in the middle hole of the throttle lever for all normal operating conditions. The long stroke outer hole may be used for extremely cold climates. The short stroke inner hole is reserved for very hot climates. Notice that the accelerator pump stem has three notches in it. A small spring clip slipped into one of these notches lifts the bowl vent valve off the bowl cover when the throttle is at idle. For all normal operating conditions, the clip should be in the center notch of the pump stem and the accelerator pump rod in the center hole of the throttle lever. The clip is to be inserted in the upper notch only when the inner hole of the throttle lever is used for extremely warm climates. The lower notch is used when the accelerator rod is inserted in the outer hole of the throttle lever for cold climate operation. If the clip is not in the correct notch of the pump stem, the vent valve will not open and close when it should. If the vent valve stays open when it should close, atmospheric pressure on the fuel in the float bowl will make the off-idle mixture too rich. If the vent valve does not open at idle, Vapor pressure will push fuel into the intake manifold. This will contribute to rough idle, stalling, and hot start problems. On past model carburetors, correct pump stroke is obtained by adjusting the bowl vent valve. On this model, correct pump stroke adjustment provides the proper bowl vent adjustment. Before checking or adjusting pump stroke, make sure the pump rod is in the center hole of the throttle lever and the clip is in the center groove of the pump stem. Back off the curb idle adjusting screw and open the choke valve. This will let you close the throttle valves completely. Hold the throttle valves fully closed and measure from the air cleaner gasket surface to the end of the accelerator pump stem. This should be a bit more than 3 sixteenths of an inch. Bend the lower end of the rod to adjust pump stroke. Bowl vent operation should be okay when pump stroke is correct. Now here's a quick check on vent operation. Blow lightly on the vapor saver connection of the bowl vent cover. With throttle valves fully closed, the vent should be open and there should be little resistance to blowing. Continue blowing lightly and very slowly open the throttle valve. Resistance to blowing should increase, indicating the vent valve is seating properly. Failure to pass this test calls for removal of the vapor saver cover and inspection of the clip, spring, and vent valve. Improper starting procedure and misunderstanding of the choke unloader is a common cause of flooding and starting problems. Often the driver's starting habits need fixing instead of the carburetor. Be sure that an owner who complains of this kind of trouble understands that the accelerator must be held wide open while cranking to clear a flooded engine. Although the choke unloader should be set to specifications, this adjustment is not as critical as most other carburetor specifications. The unloader is adjusted by bending the tang on the throttle lever. When the throttle valves are wide open, the unloader should open the choke valve one quarter inch. And that brings us to idle speed and mixture adjustments. The objective is to obtain correct idle speed, correct air fuel ratio, and correct balance between the two idle systems. When adjusting idle mixture, the engine must be completely warmed up and ignition timing must be correct. Be sure and use an accurate tachometer. Don't trust your ears. Use a reliable exhaust gas analyzer to check the air-fuel ratio. The first step is to make sure the analyzer is indicating correctly. To accomplish this, with the engine running at specified idle speed, open each idle mixture screw one sixteenth of a turn. Within 10 seconds, the analyzer needle should move numerically lower. This indicates that opening the mixture screw has indeed made the mixture richer. If opening the mixture screws one sixteenth of a turn does not result in a richer mixture reading, repeat the process, one sixteenth turn at a time, until the meter does register a definite increase in richness. Now here's why this is so important. Some analyzers are not capable of registering very lean mixtures accurately. They may indicate that the mixture is getting richer when it is actually getting leaner as the idle mixture screws are closed. To eliminate this confusing possibility, you make sure the mixture is on the rich side to start with. Then, adjust both mixture screws leaner, one sixteenth turn at a time, until the correct air-fuel ratio is obtained. You must keep one eye on the tack when adjusting idle mixture and readjust idle speed to specifications if it changes. 
As you know, the mixture ratios required to meet emission standards make it increasingly difficult to obtain smooth engine idle operation. However, if engine idle is very rough on an engine that is mechanically okay and properly tuned, you may have to balance the two idle systems. To do this, remove the plastic caps from the idle mixture screws and carefully seat both screws. Next, open both screws one and a half turns to establish a balanced starting point. From there on, you follow the same idle mixture and idle speed adjusting procedures you would if the plastic mixture screw caps were in place. Just make sure you always adjust both screws exactly the same amount each time you change the mixture adjustment. This will ensure maintaining proper balance between the two sides of the carburetor. Here's a tip. After prolonged idling, the entire engine is apt to get hotter than normal. If this happens when you're adjusting idle mixture, you'll wind up with an air-fuel ratio that is too lean. Here's why. When the carburetor is abnormally hot, the fuel in the bowl will boil and fuel vapor will be pushed through the carburetor in addition to the regular idle mixture. When the carburetor is operating at normal temperature again, it'll stop supplying extra fuel vapor. As a result, the mixture will be too lean. To spot this condition, remove the exhaust analyzer probe from the tailpipe. Run the engine at about 2,000 RPM for about 30 seconds to get rid of some of the excess heat. Then, let engine speed drop back to normal. Put the probe back into the tailpipe and recheck the analyzer reading. If the meter shows that the mixture is now on the lean side, it should be readjusted. Of course, on all carburetors, you should always make sure that air horn screws, carburetor mounting nuts, and intake manifold screws are correctly torqued. Here's a common misadjustment. Someone disconnects or connects a fuel line without using a wrench to hold a fuel inlet fitting. This may upset the float level. As a matter of fact, float level is the only internal service adjustment, and correct float level is very important. So if external adjustments don't take care of a complaint, you better check the float level. When working on a carburetor on the bench, always use a carburetor stand or legs to protect the throttle valves. It doesn't take much of a bump to nick them or knock them out of alignment. Whatever you do, don't overlook the importance of connecting all of the vacuum and vapor hoses correctly. This is a bottom view of the carburetor model, which uses ported vacuum to control the exhaust gas recirculation system. This is a worm's eye view of the carburetor which uses Venturi vacuum to control the exhaust gas recirculation system. Except for the method used to control the EGR valve, the two carburetors are alike. This was covered in last month's tech session on the cleaner air system, and you'll find a lot more on the subject in this month's reference book. So read your reference books and keep them handy.